to say about Ian Waddell is that he never stops moving, never stops pushing, and never stops working at many different things. Politics has been in his blood for most of his lifetime, and he's been quietly part of some significant change in this country. Waddell's a former New Democrat MP from British Columbia who served in Parliament from 1979 to 1993 and in the B.C. Legislature from 1996 to 2001. He also ran for the leadership of the federal NDP in 1989. He was an early political champion for environmental and Indigenous rights, and of course, all of that was after his career as a storefront lawyer and before his career as an author and filmmaker. His latest book is called Take the Torch, a Political Memoir. Got it right here, and it chronicles a pretty busy life in politics and public service, and uh, you're not surprised to know by this point, Ian Waddell joins me now in our studio <laughs> to talk with Great Peter, to see you. Peter, I, that's a kind introduction. Sometimes they say, hey, I don't stop talking either. And well, that, clearly that's fake news. Yeah, clearly. well, we're going to have about eight minutes for you today, so I'll know when it's time for you to stop talking. But thanks for coming yeah, in. Uh, let's let's start with the title. Uh, why take the torch? Well, I actually made a film uh, for CPAC, yeah. amongst others, in, in 2015 about young people not voting. I wanted to show I wanted to show how a political system worked in a in a, a, in a uh, an election, provincial election. In my writing then, of which was Vancouver Point Grey. It was Christy Clark against David Eby, a charismatic young lawyer, now the AG. Mm -hmm. And and the people came back. I said, make it how it works, how an election works. Canvas organizer, you know, candidate, phone back. They came back saying young people are not voting. Our peers, I said, make a film on that. And the rest is history. Right. We went on and on, as yeah, you know. Yeah, and we did very well in the film. And, yeah. and people's, the vote went from 36% to 50%, and it had a big effect on the new government. But I found out, smartest generation in history, clearly. But a lot of them didn't know our history. Mm -hmm. Didn't know where, where it came from. And I thought, well, you know, I've been part of making social change. Big part sometimes, yeah. little part, in, in different things. So I thought, I'll write about take about six uh, examples yeah. and show how we made the change and hand it off to them so that they can take the torch and face some of their challenges like climate change and some yeah. of their big issues. Well, let's talk about some of those issues. Okay. You, you write about your experience as a young lawyer working for the uh, Berger yeah. Inquiry, uh, looking into the proposed pipeline in the Mackenzie River Valley, which eventually led to it uh, being put on hold. Uh, how did that, that experience change your way of thinking? Well, I first of all saw Aboriginal people. I mean, I at the time came from Toronto. Uh, originally, and yeah. then I went to British Columbia. Well, I Scotland didn't... originally, yeah, five-year-old boy to Toronto. <laughs> well, I was a little boy. Yeah. I came in my kilt, a little boy, five years old, to Malton Airport in Toronto, yeah. in 1947. An amazing. So country. you end up in BC. Then I you're... end up in BC, and, and then so... you're working in Aboriginal, right in 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 the thick of Aboriginal communities. And, well, I was and, Crown Counsel, yeah. I was Defence Counsel, criminal lawyer, and down at Maine and Hastings, in Vancouver, and I saw the saw a, you know thing I was uh, working on. And then I was a storefront lawyer doing things, and Berger hired me. Uh, uh, Trudeau won, Pierre Trudeau appointed him to look at the economic, social, and environmental impact of this huge construction project to take a lot Arctic gas from Alaska to the Mackenzie Delta down the Mackenzie River to the lower 48 states. Mm -hmm. And Berger did it right, you know. He, he looked at, he listened to Native people. He held hearings throughout the entire Western Arctic in little villages and towns. I write in the book a story about Old Crow. Mm -hmm. We spent four days in Old Crow. Uh, to hear people. Normally people just came in, government people went in and out the and same day, yeah. same day, not Berger. And, and uh, so he listened patiently, he listened to him, he gave a report, but at the same time, he also talked to the oil companies and treated them with respect and he gave an alternate proposal for their pipeline. And and the environmentalists, we that was the first time we right. did environment funding, uh, I mean, funding are, groups. Are, are there lessons, are there parallels yeah, in, yeah. In, in that experience and the pipeline conversation this country is having today? Well, la plus la change, as they say, uh, in the, the Trans Mountain Pipeline, the one going you know over to Burnaby and out out by my house in, right. in Vancouver, uh, you could see that there wasn't proper consultation with the Aboriginal people. They want you, you don't just as the as the court said, you don't just say, "Yeah, we're going to do that." You actually listen and try and make changes and and try and fit it in and try and make them part of it. 
Uh, and so there was lessons to be learned there. There was lessons to be learned about uh, with Berger about um, uh, how to make things available, right. reports, and You're, how to take your time. He took a year. He Ottawa almost flipped when he said, "We're taking a year, so everybody can understand it." Mm -hmm. And he went to the villages to tell them. Then he got up. Whit Fraser and some of the other broadcasters did in six languages. Uh, throughout the north and, and, and southern Canada. And southern Canadians started to understand what Aboriginal rights was about, and, and they saw their own north for the first time. Let, let's, build, let's build on that conversation. Okay. You, uh, you, you, you get elected to Parliament. You, uh, yeah. the, the book talks about the, the, the sometimes awkward conversations and fights you had around the National Energy Program uh, and the position you I got to, to be critic. My first <laughs> critic energy area critic. was that well, yeah. I went to the lockup for the budget with Bob Ray, who was our finance critic. Jesus, it was the National Energy Program, the yeah. first one. The West hated. I had to keep my party together, you know. The 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 West. You had all that the support, East. the support in the West. And yeah, the, and yeah. Grant Notley was my great friend who kept me. Uh, we kept working. We worked in his house in Edmonton. I hope we were nice to his teenage daughter called Who's Rachel. Who's now the premier of Alberta. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, so then from the, the big, I mean, when you go through the book, there's, there's the thread of this <laughs> consciousness, if I can put it that way, about, about Indigenous rights in this country and about the treatment of Indigenous people. And you, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you, you, had a, you played a major role in, in the drafting of the Constitution, Section 35, that dealt with treaty rights for Indigenous people. Tell me about that. Well, I, I want to give some credit to Ed Broadbent and to uh, Jean Chrétien and Pierre Trudeau. Uh, what happened was, we got elected in 1980, uh, Trudeau, number one, right. <laughs> didn't have any seats west of Axworthy in Winnipeg. He had bought, he had supported, uh, uh, Broadbent in our caucus had supported the constitutional deal. He brought in a, you know, to repatriate uh, the Canadian Constitution. And it was a struggle, an epic struggle. And we had to get it right. We are doing the Canadian Constitution. So uh, uh, we said we want, for our support, we want uh, a strengthened charter, we want women's rights, we want some provincial energy rights. But above all, we want Aboriginal rights to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's Section 35, which I helped write. And it says, it was simple. Aboriginal rights are hereby recognized and affirmed. And put it, it's not in the charter, it's in the Constitution itself. You can't apply the notwithstanding clause. It's there. And that meant, that opened up the whole, there have been 300 cases since then. And we made it broad enough, Peter, so the courts could kind of define it. Right. And I believe we're in a Aboriginal revolution right now in Canada. It's going to be rocky. It's going to be, it's going to not be easy. But, you know, with the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission, the Missing Women's Commission, they, they, there's an explosion of things. Okay. And, but I think we'll get through it. And in the end, we'll get some equality. Let, let's finish on this. And yes. I should point out there's some... There's some uh, <laughs> Good stories, some too. It's not, stories all heavy. it's not all heavy. Yeah, stuff. we don't have time to tell it here, but make <laughs> sure you read the story the about the Queen and the Kilt. The yeah, but so uh, let me finish on this. Um, w let me offer this. Yeah. Uh, to me, it, it, it seems like a, it, it's a personal diary uh, from what amounts to a newcomer to Canada, which you were as a yeah. young boy, yeah. and it's about seizing opportunity and milking it for all it's worth. I mean, that's that's kind of the way I look uh, at it. I, I think I was lucky. I think it was the era of post-war uh, Canada, and I think it. And I think also we came from movements: the the green movement, the environment, the gay movement, the right. peace movement. And and if there's a message I got today, it's a couple of things. Remember where you came from. Uh, be true to your principles, and and try. We, in the book shows we work together a lot. You know, I worked mm -hmm. with Maroon. I worked with uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau. Yeah. We worked together in a lot of things. We weren't just polarized, and we got some things done. All right, uh, Ian Waddell, take the torch of political memoir. Great to talk to you. Thank you.